It's election season in India. Normally, diplomacy takes a backseat during this time. The focus is on domestic politics. But in the current climate, that's hard, especially if your rival is China, which is why Indian diplomacy is on in full swing. We saw the Prime Minister travel to Bhutan last week, and now the Foreign Minister is traveling. Minister S.J. Shankar, he's in the Philippines. He had some very important meetings there, first with the Foreign Minister, then with the President, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., a.k.a. Bong Bong Marcos. Now, the timing of this visit is also very important. China and the Philippines have been clashing nonstop. The root issue is the South China Sea. China claims almost all of it. The Philippines claims some of it. So both militaries have come close to blows. One such incident happened over the weekend. Two Chinese Coast Guard ships targeted a Philippine boat. They fired water cannons at it. Take a look. That's just one incident. We've seen multiple close calls in the last few months, and that's the background for Jay Shankar's visit. India, too, knows about China's land grabs, so New Delhi can sympathize with Manila. Minister Jay Shankar did not address China directly, but his message was pretty clear. Unclos 1982 is particularly important in that regard as the constitution of the seas. All parties must adhere to it in its entirety, both in letter and in spirit. I take this opportunity to firmly reiterate India's support to the Philippines for upholding its national sovereignty. Some quick context here. UNCLOS is a United Nations Convention. It's like a rule book for the seas. In 2013, Manila sued China under these rules. In 2019, a tribunal sided with Manila. It rejected China's claims over the disputed waters. Back then, India did not say very much. India just noted this UNCLOS verdict. But now, India is openly supporting it. It is asking China to adhere to the 2019 verdict. In simple words, India has finally picked a side and it is supporting the Philippines against China. But what does this partnership look like? What is the foundation of it? Well, there are many. Number one is the shared threat. India faces Chinese expansionism in the Himalayas. The Philippines faces it in the seas. Different regions, but the same problem. Number two is trade. In 2015, bilateral trade was around $1.9 billion. In 2022, it has reached close to $3 billion, which is a 58% rise in seven years. And there's, there's potential for a lot more. Finally, factor number three, military cooperation. In 2022, the Philippines bought BrahMos missiles from India. The deal is worth $370 million, $370 million. The delivery is expected to start this year. Reports say they're also keen on the Tejas fighter jet. Both sides also make regular port calls. In fact, an Indian warship docked in Manila on Monday. It's on a three-day mission to the Philippines. So there's a lot going for both sides. But the catalyst remains China. There's a common thread between their claims over Indian and Philippine land. India has no right to unilaterally develop Zhangnan, known as South Tibet in English, which belongs to China. India's actions will only further complicate the border issue and create negative disturbance in the border areas of the two countries. In the face of illegal intrusion of the Philippine vessels, the Chinese Coast Guard has taken necessary law enforcement measures. Their response on the scene was legitimate, professional and restrained, which is beyond reproach. Manila is arguably worse off. They've summoned China's top diplomat in the Philippines, also lodged a diplomatic protest. But the good news is they have support. The U.S. is backing Manila. The European Union is backing Manila. So are Japan and South Korea. Now, India is joining that same camp. It will help New Delhi project power in a new region. We saw evidence of that last year. India and the Philippines held joint drills in the South China Sea. It was also open up. It will also rather open up new economic frontiers. After all, Manila is a member of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. So military and strategic ties with the Philippines 
could give India leverage. Of course, the downside is poking China. Beijing has criticized India's drills in the South China Sea. It has also asked New Delhi to respect its claims in the region. Now, Manila has a mutual defense treaty with the U.S. Washington has repeatedly promised to defend them, but India has no such backup. So while using China to build this relationship is okay, New Delhi must expand it, create a partnership that goes beyond Beijing.